So welcome to our immigration spotlight. My name is Stacy Fitzwater and I'm a co-member of Loretto and a member of the Latin American Caribbean Committee. And uh, we have a lot of important information to share this morning. And um, I just wanna preface it by saying, uh, per usual, information is coming and changing uh, daily. And um, there are some recent events that we're going to share with you that are difficult today, um, that bring up a lot of emotions for many of us personally. And um, we are grateful that we're all together to support each other and to come together to support the communities uh, that partner with us. So we will be sharing more information about that soon, um, but I wanted to lead with that. And then I want to pass it over to Lillian, who's gonna start us off with an opening prayer. Okay, this is a combination of two prayers that I use regularly. Uh, welcoming God, no one is a stranger to you and no one is far from your loving care. In your goodness, care for the refugees and asylum seekers and immigrants, those separated from their loved ones, those who are lost, and those who have been exiled from their homes. Get everyone safely to the place where they belong to be, where they long to be. Help us show your friendship to strangers and to all in need. And so we ask, put your ear to the ground. Put your ear to the ground and listen. Hurried, for, worried footsteps, bitterness, rebellion, hope hasn't yet begun. Listen again. Put out feelers. The Lord is there. God is far less likely to abandon us to hardship than in times of ease. Amen. Thank you so much, Lillian. Before I turn it over to some of our speakers, I wanna let everybody know kind of what's on our agenda today. Um, we will be hearing from, from up to four people. Uh, things are changing rapidly. So um, we're grateful for those who can make time to be with us today. And our goal is to hear from two main areas of our U.S.-Mexico border. We're going to start by hearing some updates from our partners um, at the Tijuana, California-Mexico border. And I will let Mary Jean speak to that in a moment. And we're also going to be hearing updates from our Arizona-Mexico border um, from our good friends Bob and Dora. So uh, before we get started, um, I do wanna acknowledge Sara, who's joining us and will be sharing first, does need to leave uh, for another commitment halfway through. So we're going to have an opportunity for Q&A with Sara before she leaves, but then we'll also have a final opportunity for conversation at the end of the hour. Uh, so Mary Jean, will you uh, please introduce our guests from Tijuana? And we'll need you to unmute, Mary Jean. Good morning. Um, this morning, uh, Sada will be on and she is the director right now in Paulina's absence of Espacio Migrante. She is the main fundraiser and now she's running the office because Paulina is on maternity leave. Paulina has a little new baby, Diego Jose. So Sara, right away, because I know you have to go. Just give us an update on Espacio Migrante. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thanks for inviting us to talk about our work. Well, currently, um, I don't know if you, I think many of you know, we, we run a shelter here in Tijuana. We receive families that uh, are seeking asylum in the U.S. Currently, we have about 
40, fam 40 uh, people in the shelter. We have families from Afghanistan, from El Salvador, from Guatemala, from Colombia, and from Mexico. Uh, and from Mexico. Right now, it's the first time that we receive families from Afghanistan. And it's it's a challenge because they speak a little English and uh, the most of the team, they don't speak English. So it's been um, a little complicated with the communication. Um, but, but we don't have like any nationality specific that we, that we receive. So we, we have been receiving families from Africa, from South America, from Central America, et cetera. And also um, in Tijuana, there's, there's, we, we have seen a lot of mi militarization uh, in, in the border because of the um, irregular crossing through playas and through other, uh, um, other, other parts of the, of the border. So we have seen an increase of the militarization. And like two weeks ago, the National Guard and the migration authorities tried to enter in, in, into a shelter that is really close to Espacio Migrante. So right now we are um, the um, other shelters and organizations. We are trying to talk with human rights because it's supposedly that the shelters, they are like a sacred spaces where police or National Guard or migration authorities cannot enter. And we have seen that in, in the past few days, we, we also, we have seen um, that the National Guard and the army, they, they are around the, the shelters. They are like, um, I don't know the, the word in English, but it's como, it's like they are, Rodeándolos, I don't know if you know the word. Surrounding, in... surrounding. Yes, yes. So that's that's very intimidating for the families and for for the migrant families because some of them had in the past had some experiences of violence with them. So and for example, next to us there's a clinic and they haven't received any new patients because they are afraid to go because of the national guard and and the migration authorities. So, and, and also uh, outside of Espacio Migrante, there's a large population, a large homeless population that they are sleeping outside of Espacio Migrante at night. And we, we also, we know that um, with homeless people, authorities are um, more aggressive. They detain them, they throw away their documents and they just like, put them in jail for a couple of hours and then then just, just them go and it's we have seen that this is affecting all the area for homeless people for migrants and even for us they are working every day we feel intimidating by them and and we don't feel safe um, when we go to work so that's one thing that I want to bring bring that up because it's really important to know that Right now, shelters are um, suffering harassment from 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 these authorities. And uh, uh, as as Mary Jean mentioned, uh, right now I'm the one that is in charge of Espacio Migrante while Pauline is gone. She's returning next month. Um, and also, I, I mean, I, I am the financial director of Espacio Migrante, so I see all the uh, administrative things. Uh, a good news is that recently we received, uh, we are a non, by national nonprofit, we are a 501c3 in California. And recently we received, we are a nonprofit in Mexico, but until September, we had to pay taxes to the government. But in September we received uh, like, like, the, like, like the Mexican 501c3. So right now we are um, tax exempt in Mexico too. So that's a really good news because a huge part of our funds went to pay taxes in Mexico because we were treated as a, any regular company that they, that that make profit. So that's a, another update. And also um, I've been working in, in, in a lot of, a lot of um, 
proposals for grants. And in a few, a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, um, a friend that has been helping Espacio Migrante since 2019, the, 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 he and his friends organized a fundraiser in La Jolla. And we, we raised about $12,000 for, for that event. So we are really happy because last year they organized the same event for us in La Jolla and we raised around $8,000 and now we increased that amount. So we're really excited. Um, also, um, well, right now I want to also invite you all because we are having our um, annual festival of Dia de los Muertos next week on Thursday. If you are able to, to cross and to celebrate with us, that would be great. We we want to um, honor, uh, especially the, the the families and the people that that have died while trying to to get asylum or to cross to the U.S. And also we are um, we are having our annual cultural festival in in December, Miradas Fronterizas, which is a festival where where there's going to be music um dancing um and photo exhibition and in and it's all related to to migration oh i know bob and dora know jason de leon so we are having the hostel terrain 84 exhibition in in december so you are all invited to to come i will i will um send you the invitation through email but if you want to join us that would be great i know that i only have 10 minutes so I will stop here. I don't know if you have any questions. Um, so yes, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Sara. <clears throat> thank you, Sara. Thank you, Mary Jean, for connecting us. Um, and yes, we don't want to keep you too long, Sara, but I did want to pause. Um, that was a lot of information. And so I imagine some folks may have some questions. Um, and so open floor, um, if you'd like to raise your hand, we can make sure we can call on individuals. And I see Rosa to start. Thanks, Rosa. Very quickly, um, muchísimas gracias, Sara. Thank you so much. Uh, my question is around the Afghani um, uh, migrants. I, I'm wondering how they are arriving. Um, Mm -hmm. How are they, you know, getting to that Mexico. southern border? I know that in this region of New York, the Northeast, we we have many and their services. Mm -hmm. So I could also connect you with a place in New Haven that I know of, um, just in terms of, you know, any types of resources that they may feel they can share. Um, but okay. that's my question. I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Yes. Well, um, when I asked them and they say that they 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 went to pakistan and then from pakistan took a flight to brazil and then from brazil they cross all the way up and um, sometimes in bus sometimes walking sometimes in uh, like on a on a flight but yes like they cross from all the way to brazil they cross um i don't know how many countries like more than seven in order to get to Mexico. And they 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 they, they arrived in Tapachula and from Tapachula they flew from to Mexico City and then to Tijuana. And and I also want to mention that this family it was a it's a family of 13 people. However, only eight got their CBP1 appointment. So the eight members have crossed and the other five they are staying with us. And that's something that I that I forget to mention. Right now, the, the CBP-1 application is not giving any appointments to the families or to the people that are seeking asylum. And we, we the shelters, we are getting full. We are really full. There's a lot of people in need of a shelter. And another thing is people are getting desperate about crossing. And they, that's why they are trying to cross through these points, for example through playas and through other um, not official ports of entry, 
So that's that's the reason why families are trying just to cross because they are they are they they haven't been here for months and they haven't uh, got any luck with a CBP one application. So that's something really important to understand why this massive crossing in the past few weeks. Thank you, Sada. Thank you for your question, Rosa. I see Mary Ella next. Yes, uh, good morning. Thank you so much for your information, Sarah. The question I have is uh, I'm located in Kentucky and Kentucky Refugee Ministries uh, has a large population of uh, Afghan people. But most important, I have uh, two or three friends uh, from Afghanistan, and I was wondering if you have any chance or any way for connection with people who are already here or centers who are helping Afghans um, in your center. But one of the things that I can offer is to talk to some of my friends from Afghanistan and see if they know any centers here in the US where maybe will be interesting or they have some sources to get in contact with you. Uh, I'm asking if I can have your um, information. And, and the other question I have is when you talk about some harassment, um, I don't know if I understood correctly, some of the shelters are getting this kind of behave by authorities, did you say, or by other people? Thank you. Um, yeah, responding to your first um, question, Mariela. Um, well, yeah, that would be great. I know that the, the family has more relatives in the US. They like I, I know that his brother or one of the brothers is in the US. And, and the rest of the family that have, have already crossed, but I don't know how many resources they have. So that would be great to like to put me in contact with other with organizations. They're helping uh, families from Afghanistan. That would be great. I, I will really appreciate it. Um, and another, the, the second it's by the authorities, by the police, by the National Guard, by the army and by the migration authorities. So that's the harassment that we have seen in in the last um, um, couple of weeks ago. And I, I, I'm sorry, I, there's a lot of information, but I also know that the the migration authorities they are trying to contain migration in order not, to not get into the U.S. So, and but this is Mexican authorities, so they are working or cooperating. With, with the with the U.S. authorities in order to deport people, to return people, uh, so they cannot um, get to get to the border, and to, so they they don't apply for asylum. So that's that's another important thing that Mexico is doing the U.S. work in that matter. Thank you, sir. And I was wondering if it may be LACC can write a letter and maybe to circulate this letter to other organizations, because I do not know if everybody really knows about what's going on in the other side of, and I don't know, this is a, something that we can put in the air and see what we, maybe we can do something, to write something and to circulate this information. Thank you. Um, I, I also want to mention, I'm sorry for taking that much time, but in the other side, in I know that in the other side, uh, well, a couple of weeks ago, I went to San Diego and people are, CBP is dropping people on the street. There is no shelter for people. I know that they are prioritizing women and children because I didn't see any children, but, um, but uh, I don't know if that it's already working because my visa expired, so I'm not able to cross to the US anymore. But the last time that I went, um, a lot of people is a lot of migrants. They're in a homeless situation because there's not enough in shelters for them in in San Diego. So I know that also the the crisis in San Diego it's 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 getting bigger. Thank you, Mariella, and thank you, Sada. Please don't apologize for sharing information. That's why we're all here and we're so grateful for you. Um, I see Sally's hand uh, and then I'll come to Bob. Okay, thanks, Stacey. Uh, Sarah, uh, 
thank you so much for being with us this morning. Um, I don't really have a question for you. I, I, I just want to observe that in the midst of all of the heartache and the trauma and the intimidation and the fear and everything else that you're dealing with, I, I love how your center tries to do fun, uplifting, exciting things. Uh, you're always doing something special. I've been there uh, several times now. It, it is such a welcoming place to be. And um, the parties that you throw, the everything that you do to try to keep people's spirits up is just so wonderful. And I just want to thank you for that. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for, for that comment. We have a saying in Espacio Migrante, which is that we have to um, do our work with, uh, in order like to have a like joyful resistance. So it's really important for us to have that inner work. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Bob, did I see your hand? Okay. Sarah, my, my question is, you, you said that the, the they're dropping people off in the streets and they're, they're prioritizing the women and children. Does that mean that there are separation of families then? Uh, I'm not really sure, but there there's might be that because um, when I was there, we were in La Familia Community Center, something like that. It's in, in, in San Isidro. And there, there was like a table that they were like, if you're missing a relative, if they separated you, just get, come to us and provide all the information and we will try to look for that relative. So I, I'm guessing that that's what they are doing because when they they go to the, the detention center, they separate families and like men and women and children. So... I'm guessing that that's real, uh, a, uh, like, yeah, that's happening. And 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 because I, I also saw that there, there was someone trying to look for relatives that did, if they were separated. Thank you. You're welcome. Stara, thanks so much for hopping on this morning. I know that you are very busy and we we've talked so thanks again Sada and uh, we'll be in touch and um, we'll put your email in the chat so Mariela can get it okay thank you okay thank you thank you so much thank you all thank you for for having me here I, I'm, I'm writing my email and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you very much. Okay, Thank you, Sarah. thanks, Sara. Thank you, Sara. <clears throat> bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. So, Sara's email is in the chat. Um, feel free to save that if you'd like to stay in touch. Um, we had hoped to be joined by another partner at the uh, Tijuana border. I don't think Andre could be with us. Mary Jean, is there anything that you wanted to share from Ar Arco Iris? I, you know what? Let's wait. She <laughs> might. I'm going to see if I can contact her. And otherwise, I can speak to um, Arco Iris at the end. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll bounce between our respective borders. Um, now we're moving from the California-Mexico border to the Arizona-Mexico border. Um, and we're so grateful, Bob and Dora, that you are both with us today. Um, I believe Bob wanted to start out with uh, some updates. No, let, let Dora talk, please. Let Dora first? Okay, great. Dora, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, well, it's always an honor to be part of this incredible group of humans, as I say, with big hearts. Um, well, uh, we are having a very serious concerns, and I am going to ask for 
I'm gonna try my best to stay put because it's been a a very hard week in Sasso de Sonora. So last Saturday I had my my trip plan and my van full of good stuff for our new library that was coming up in that beautiful little town. And I was not able to cross for the very first time for three years that we've been going back and forth. And people who has been going in that town for 20 something years. Uh, so what happened is that a new cartel has moved in and it's a war zone. It is a lot of gunfire. Our center has been closed, has been shut down by our choice to protect our volunteers, our staff, and our migrants. They are in the midst of us. Um, I communicate with the women every single day and I hear their desperation. These people is trapped in that very small town because they cannot go left, they cannot go right. If they go want to get out from the town and the Mexican side, they, ha they are really in a high risk to be kidnapped, God forbid killed. So, and if, and if, and our port of entry, which is not even a mile or a quarter of a mile from their homes is already denying uh, protection. People has already presented in that area it has been sent back. The families that presented two days ago, the women were beat up by some members of the cartel of the opposite, the other cartel. And thank goodness they let him go, but all they did is grab their kids and went to the port of entry and they said, no, you gotta go back. So I, I come in with a very heavy, <laughs> Uh, I am very sorry, but this is tough, you know, because each of you know how, how we have uh, learned to appreciate the community effort to protect our migrants, our families, our asylum seekers. And it has been a place of uh, beautiful joy. And I, when I saw the picture of uh, a rosa with our butterflies it is really tough because um, we don't know what's gonna happen to our center. If the local group that has been operating from the area for years, but it had that community safe in some ways, um, if they lose their battle in the new larger organized group move in, I believe our ministry will be done. Because the larger group is called Chapitos. They are the, the largest cartel and very strong in the Sonoran area. What it hurts me the most is the non-governmental offices have come in into that remote town to take care of them, to protect them, or even the Red Cross to come and offer transportation to get them out of there to another, uh, you know, to displace them to another town in Mexico. So I am working and trying to advocate with a lawyer from Tucson, Arizona, to write, um, to we come out with a list of people who wants to flee. And that we're trying to get to the authorities, to senators, to congressmen in a region to see if we can get some humanitarian parole visas. We have not been successful yet. And the 
we have a woman who is our nurse and some of you met. Her name is Ophelia. We, uh, we were so happy to provide her with a scholarship with all your support to become a nurse. And she's been so proud of her career in her school. Now she's fearing for her life because her the local only doctor in the community has left. He said, I can't stay. So does the other nurses. So that leaves Ophelia, the only person in that small town with some medical background. Well, that means that she's a high risk to be kidnapped and be taken to the mountains in the battlefield to take care of these people. So we are working. Uh, I pray that today is a day of hope. They, they answer us and they let us bring her to safety. Um, this really remind me of uh, the Palestines in Gaza trapped. They can go nowhere. So it is so close to home, you know. Uh, but I, um, beside that, Salvavision, our organization continues to set light in other places. Our embroidery women are continuing to do their work. I have encouraged our women in Sasabe who are embroidery, incredible artists, to do that at home now they are in lockdown. I said, use your time, embroider as many bags as you can, because that's healing, and put their, set their mind in other things. Um, so I want to leave my conversation with uh, hope. And uh, I just uh, asking for, you know, solidaridad, solidarity in that community. Um, I also want to share that I read an alert in El Salvador. It's all over the place. We're invaded right now everywhere. In El Salvador, the, the president has ordered that every migrant that arrives in El Salvador from India, from Afghanistan, from many Middle Eastern countries, had to pay a thousand dollar fee to go through our country. So you know, it's a it's a lot going on against uh, humanity, against our uh, people seeking safety. So thank you for your time, and I I've always so honor and appreciate every one of you support by praying, by writing a letter, by taking action. And um, thank you. Thank you so much, Dora. Thank you for making the time and for sharing your heart and this so difficult news. Um, I, I'd like us all to be able to pause here and um, ask questions, and I'm going to assume a question that's on a lot of our minds is how can we help, particularly in Sasabe? Is there anything that we as individuals, Dora, or as a collective community can do to help, whether it's with the communication with the lawyer and, and seeking that humanitarian um, aid and parole visas, or is there anything else that we could be doing to support Sasabe? Uh, thank you, Stacy. And um, I know we had you there a couple, not even a month ago, and we had a beautiful day. And um, I think the best thing right now is to support the lawyer who is trying her best to bring these families by um, helping her or sending a collective as an or as a LLCC, uh, a, a letter to the director of the sector, uh, the border patrol sector, because see the port of entry agents, they have no power, they have no authority to accept anybody, and they won't. They will. They will not go the the extra mile. Instead, they're already wearing uh, bulletproof vest, and I'm thinking they're not going to bother you. There, you are safe in this side. Uh, our people in Sasabe are the ones that need protection. And um, 
So I think uh, doing that will help. I Bob has the information for the director of the Tucson sector because we have met with him and his staff before. So I think that will be very, very, very powerful. And I can send the information of the nurse that we're trying to move to safety. Thank you. Thank you, Dora. And I know Bob wanted to speak to that um, in a little bit. Before we do, um, are there any other questions or comments if you'd like to raise your hand? Rosa, thank you. Um, well, Dora, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Um, oh, hello. Hello. Baby. Thank goodness for this one. <laughs> um, you know, we um, I heard some weeks ago about how, well, I heard from my, from my primas in Tijuana, how the carteles were shifting how they were fighting, how they were trying to take over each other's space. I didn't think it would extend all the way to Sonora, but it has. Um, I use this background so much. It's the side of your Casa de la Esperanza. So I just want to leave you with that thought of Casa de la Esperanza. We are here with you. It's a home of hope. And this space is a, a space of hope. We are with you. We help carry your pain. We see you have your Loretto t-shirt and your medalla there. Um, we're with you, Dora. And we will continue to support you and the women, the volunteers, um, let's put our heads together to see how we could support the women while they're in lockdown, how we can continue with your very exciting library project. Um, we're with you. I want you to know that because I know that you probably feel very, you know, alone and through these tough times. So, thank you. Um, thank you. Estamos con ustedes. Thank you. And I extend this to the women in the community because they love the Loreto communities. They will never forget the retreat that was sponsored by Loreto. They have, they have been talking about it in the first uh, um, show up of the new group was the day of the anniversary that we were at the retreat. So uh, they know who the Loreto community is. And I will extend your love, your prayers, your support. They will know this today. Thank you. Thank you. One thing that Dora did not mention is that all like Grupo Beta left, you know, all their government agencies left and their and Ophelia has three little boys and they're in hiding and um uh, and she she has been approached right Dora by yes. the cartel to help with the medical stuff yeah. and that's when she went into hiding yes so, anyway, yeah. Thank you, Mary Jean. Yeah, I think um, I, I've taken some notes, Dora, of what we can do next steps. I know Bob and Mary Jean have already started putting their heads together um, around this letter that um, we hope to be able to get signed and, and sent to the director. Um, Bob and Mary Jean, was there anything that you wanted to add to that? Bob, right. you talk. Yeah, I'll, I'll get the information and we'll make sure that, that it gets out to everybody. So, you know, you can send uh, send letter, individual letters and we can do a group letter as well. Uh, 
you know, but the other thing is, well, this, this, it, this uh, issue extends south into Caborca and Altar. Uh, people are being killed and slaughtered in those places. Uh, and, and it, it, you know, the, the flow of migrants has been, has stopped, you know, so, so they're, they're at risk as well. I mean, so many people are at great risk, you know, but of course, you know, the, you know, for the people in Sasebe, it's, it's a horror. It's a horror. Yeah. Um, so whatever, whatever we can do individually, collectively to, 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 to help is, is important. And, and, you know, the, the more letters that they receive, you know, hopefully it'll get their attention and, and, you know, they'll take some action. Unfortunately, we've had, had a couple of meetings with them. So, so we're working to, to establish a good working relationship, you know, with, with what we do as far as humanitarian aid and, and working at the border. And so, uh, thank just, you, Bob. We just got to try, just got to try. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I know Bob's heart too is hurting. We have been working on this together for a while, <laughs> so long, but um, I know I cannot um, give up hope, and the hope I find is in you and everyone, and I I had to stay strong, and I will be, and so does our women in our community in Sasebe. Good prevail. So hopefully <laughs> next time we meet, it's a better news. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dora. Um, we have a lot uh, planned to share with everyone today. I know we're we're bouncing all over um, the place, and so I believe we are. <clears throat> excuse me. Joined by Andrea from Tijuana. Uh, Mary Jean, would you like to introduce Andrea? Andre. Um, and hola, hola. Hola, me. Um, Andre is from Casa Arcoiris, and she works with all the guests who are there and does amazing things. She um, has an urban garden that Loretto helped start, and and every space that's uh, dirt is now covered with beans and tomatoes and squash and <laughs> lots of stuff. And with that, Andre, um, good morning and give us a little update. Okay, take it away, Andre. Ok, um, bueno, yo no hablo inglés, pero voy a tratar de hablar español muy lento para que me puedan entender. Mira, we have Rosa and Lillian and Bob here that can translate. I don't speak Hola, English, sí. but I'm going to speak slowly so you all might Muy bien, gracias. Understand. Ok, bueno, eh, me gustaría comentarles como un poco eh, agradecerles en primer lugar todo el, el apoyo que nos han estado prestando desde la primera vez que pisaron Casa Arcoíris, ¿no? Eh, hoy en día tenemos una casa gracias a... a, a a ustedes, ¿no? Que cuenta con alimentos frescos, con tomates, eh, con, bueno, ya no, porque cambiamos de estación, ¿no? Pero, deja, deja pero estamos de... trabajando en eso, ¿no? Y deja, ha sido... Deja muy de traducir eso, por favor. Ok. Sí. Um, first of all, we're, we're very, um, uh, I have much gratitude to yeah. the Loreto community for all your support at Casa Arcoiris ever since you first stepped into our house. We have um, a house that now has fresh food. We have tomatoes. Um, well, we have some tomatoes, but of course, you know, with the season, the crops are changing. Um, but we're, we're very appreciative. Okay. Adelante, Andre. 
Sí, bueno, y eso nos va a permitir en el futuro próximo conectar con otra organización que se llama Cultiva Ya, que nos va a acompañar en el desarrollo de la huerta para hacer también capacitación para, para la comunidad que vive en el albergue y en el futuro poder llevar ese conocimiento a otros albergues y ojalá también algunos almácigos y cositas que puedan permitir que, que otros albergues puedan desarrollar también algún poquito de, de huerta. Muy bien. So this is enabling us um, to also uh, work with um, other uh, shelters, another shelter called Cultiva Ya, which is basically like crops now. And so um, together we'll be able to develop um, uh, uh, this, this, these gardens and also do training in the area of, of crops. Sí. Y otra cosa, <clears throat> perdón, muy significativa para residentes del albergue es que gran parte de ellos vienen de zonas rurales, vienen del campo. Eh, pero en esos lugares recibieron muchísima violencia. Entonces, el trabajo en la huerta eh, permite también de alguna manera que ellos reconecten con, con su historia, ¿no? Con, y pongan en valor esos conocimientos que, que ya traen, ¿no? Pero muchas veces por vergüenza o por trauma no lo sacan eh, a relucir, ¿no? Entonces, la huerta también se ha transformado como en un espacio, digamos, un poco terapéutico, ¿no? Porque de alguna manera sana eh, esas cuestiones que estaban escondidas, pero que son muy valiosas, son conocimientos muy valiosos y en algunos casos ancestrales. Entonces, también ha sido muy, muy significativo usar ¿no? la, la justificación de la huerta para trabajar estas cuestiones. We, um... Also, something that's very important is that um, we, many of those that are working in the in our garden are from rural areas, and it is in these rural areas where they have experienced abuse, and and so they bring trauma with them, um, and at the same time, working in the garden has helped them to reconnect with that. But it, it also provides a space for for healing, for um, um, you know bringing those feelings forth. But also, um, it's kind of a therapeutic uh, time for them in in working with with the crops and and the garden, and and so that provides an opportunity um, aside from taking part in living in in the uh, the hustle but to be able to do that healing and connecting with the earth um, through the garden work sí eh, y eso eh, se está transformando también en una posibilidad de eh, pensar en una metodología para utilizar los huertos, sobre todo con personas migrantes, para eh, poner en valor esa sabiduría, ¿no? esos conocimientos, valorarlos, reconocerlos a través de la práctica del cuidado ¿no? de, de los alimentos. Entonces, eh, por eso ha sido tan significativo. Mm. So, one, one really important part of it is that this can be a transformative space to begin to develop a methodology um, using some of this um, ancient knowledge, traditional knowledge of, of growing the crops and taking that value and being able to, to um, develop this, this training methodology for, for the, the migrants. Así es, entonces, eh, ha sido un aporte que pues literalmente está germinando en otras cosas, ¿no? No solamente en, en disponer de comida, sino que pues también en, 
en disponer de un espacio que resulta sanador, resulta de alguna manera mágica, ¿no? que aún desconocemos técnicamente, eh, funciona y nos ayuda mucho. Entonces, pues, le agradezco. Um, this is, um, it's germinating, literally, um, these different ways of working, not only generating food, Um, but also a healthy lifestyle, a uh, therapeutic lifestyle in a way, a very magical way that's non-technical um, to be able to um, bring this different aspect um, of gardening work um, to the shelter. Sí, eso por una parte, ¿no? Por otra, eh, comentarles que pues tenemos al fin una casa funcionando con un buen sistema de drenaje. <laughs> eso es gracias a ustedes. <laughs> okay, that was just on one part. On the other part, I also want to share that we now have a functioning drainage plumbing system at the <laughs> shelter, thanks to you all. Thanks to Link. Thanks to Link, yes. Ok, sí, eso ya está funcionando muy bien. Podemos ir al baño sin miedo, ducharnos también. <ríe> eh, We're very y... happy we can go to the, to the, use the That's facilities it. without any fear of any disruption with the pipe. So, um, parece que vamos a llegar a las preguntas. So are we doing the Q&A now, Stacey? Thank you, yes. Uh, <laughs> you said that in Spanish, Rosa. I know, it's okay. I, I, I I'm Spanish is not Andre. great, but, but but I picked up on that. Muchas gracias, Andre. Uh, and muchas gracias, Rosa, for jumping in as a translator last minute. Um, are there any questions for Andre? Andre, how come you are talking and not uh, um, Siri, Nicolasa. Ah, no entendí. Rosa, ¿puedes, can you translate me? Nos puedes decir por qué tú estás hablando en vez de Nicola, Nico. Ah, bueno, porque Nicolasa este fin de semana se va a casar. Entonces está preparando su boda y pues tomando sus vacaciones para aquello. Y pues hoy día yo estoy representando a mi compañera. Así que pues yeah. estamos muy contentas también acompañando eso. <laughs> <laughs> Gracias. So Nico, the, the co-director, is getting married this weekend. And so she's off. And Andre is, is now in, in charge for the weekend. Yes. Sí, sí. Wonderful. Thank you. I see a question from Dora. Andrea, solo quiero felicitarte por tu lindo programa. Yo sé que la comunidad de ustedes está expuesta a mucha, mucha violencia y a mucha eh, dificultad. Y a pesar de esa dificultad, ustedes están saliendo adelante. Me llena de esperanza tu programa, tu casa. Ah, muchas gracias. And, uh, es lo que yo quería preguntar, ¿cómo están ustedes trabajando con las adversidades de las autoridades y el crimen organizado? So I just uh, uh, congratulating her for her program, how good she's doing, and even with all the adversities in their community, they are doing great, and they're working with lots of hope. So my question was to her, how are you guys trying to navigate the situation with the authorities in the organized crime. A ver. Sí, eh, uff, supongo que Sara ya también les adelantó algo, ¿no? Eh, está muy difícil porque en Tijuana es, es, es extraño. No contamos, digamos, con el apoyo de la policía, al contrario, para nosotras la policía. Eh, nos genera muchísima desconfianza, ¿no? 
eh, tan policía, Instituto Nacional de Migración, eh, etc. Eh, a muchas gracias, Rosa, estás escribiendo, ¿verdad? Súper. Entonces, eh, es una dificultad muy grande. Hemos tenido situaciones de personas que rondan el albergue eh, y hemos tenido que llamar a la policía. La policía y las autoridades municipales se han comprometido eternamente a eh, prestar mayor eh, vigilancia, etcétera, pero pues no, no pasa nada, ¿no? Y el problema que tenemos es que la casa sí está muy vulnerable porque nosotros no tenemos puerta en el antejardín, digamos, tiene una puerta que está abierta todo el día, puede entrar quien quiera, ¿no? Eh, entonces nuestro siguiente desafío es financiar un sistema eléctrico que nos permita abrir y cerrar la puerta por dentro, ¿no? Hasta ahí se entiende, se entiende ¿verdad? Bien. Eh, eso en general específicamente en nuestra casa no hemos tenido como ningún evento violento pero sí sabemos que estamos en una situación muy vulnerable porque además eh, no tenemos vecinos nuestro vecino de enfrente es un sitio baldío el otro vecino es una iglesia que pues de día está vacía de noche está vacía ¿no? y del otro lado también locales comerciales que de noche pues no hay nadie. Entonces, somos como los únicos vecinos de esa esquina. Eh, y eso no, nos preocupa, nos preocupa, y eh, nos hemos dado cuenta también que, pues por otra parte, lo que sí podemos hacer es organizarnos colectivamente con otras organizaciones, ¿no? Y en eso estamos con Espacio Migrante, con RHA, eh, con Border Crisis Center, eh, viendo algunas posibilidades de eh, poder conectar y actuar en conjunto, ¿no? Para, para denunciar abusos de poder, pero también para ver cómo podemos cuidarnos entre todas. Gracias. Muy amable. Gracias, Dora, for your question. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you, Andrea. Um, I'm looking at the time, uh, and I want to respect the, the hour that we asked for everyone to join us. Um, LACC will be having ongoing conversations about how we can continue to support um, our partners, and we'll be sharing more information. Um, we heard that opportunity with Andre with raising funds for an electric door. I'd love for us to have some conversations about how we could support that. Um, and then before we close, we we always like to end with a call to action. Um, and so I just want to share with everyone, uh, we started earlier hearing from uh, Dora about Sasabe and a project that was started not long ago. Um, and so I just wanted to close with, with us thinking about the people of Sasabe. Um, here's Dora taking us into the center. And a new project that we hope we can come back to discuss uh, when there is peace is the library. And so I wanted to show everyone this new library uh, that is starting in Sasa Bay. They have rooms and I'm sure it already looks even better than this since I've been there. Um, but Dora is working to collect donations in the way of books for children, um, also funds so that they can have the computers they've already started setting up and the desks and space uh, to really give opportunity to the community beyond the small space that is there. And so um, we'd like to invite, and we will make sure we share all of these resources out, but we'd like to invite everyone to support Salsa Vision, whether it's through the shop, and I put the link in the chat, um, or also just through donating on their website. And so you can find that opportunity here. And so LACC will be sending that out. Um, before we do close, Andre, is there any other way that we could be supporting 
what's happening at Arco Iris. Andrea, ¿hay otro modo que podamos apoyarlos en la Casa del Arco Iris? I think she might have... Got off. They might have I think she's gone. gone. Yeah. Right. You lost you her. Know, so we, mm -hmm. Go ahead, Mary Jean. Uh, we can, uh, you know, the ministry grants are coming out. I have no idea what an electric door is, but... Um, we know how vulnerable the house is and what a change when Link helped get the, the plumbing, not only the plumbing, but the roof. And then they had to do all the ceilings and um, good things are happening, but it's uh, hard for them, you know? Uh, so and if I can just add that um, we also got a grant for the garden through LACC and every space outside of that building has been planted. Every space, they've utilized even what they had to cut down, these vines with thorns, they use them to keep the cats and animals out. They covered the plant, every little space. We'll share pictures of that. Yes. It's beautiful, beautiful. Andre gave me a tour, us a tour. So. Mary Jean, Mary, yeah. Mary Jean and Bob, I would like to ask the two of you to take all of our best wishes to the wedding tomorrow that you uh, are going to be attending. We will. Tell, tell her that we all have her in our hearts and prayers. I, we will. Good. Uh, also, mm -hmm. um, Bob and I last night tried, I mean, we talked with Dora and um, I think if we'll get the information of who to write to. And I think, I, I remember in past how we flooded with letters to people and it does make a difference. And, um, Maybe Barbara from the our congregation and Link and individual people. We'll get it out to people. But Ophelia and her three little boys are in danger, you know, and this dang old cartels, you know. You know, Dora's in danger too. You know, we can't go there. So it's got, I don't know. No, thank you, Mary Jean. I, everyone on this call and those who are on the LACC listserv, we will get information out um, uh, so that we can all take some next steps for the, the many opportunities that we have to support. And so I just want to thank uh, Bob for joining us with Mary Jean. Dora, thank you for taking time and for sharing with us, um, such a difficult, difficult situation. And, and I just wanna echo what everyone has said. Our hearts are with you, we are with you. Um, you are Loretto and so we are with you. Thank you all for your time, especially since we ran over a little bit this morning. This recording will be shared out um, with the rest of Loretto and our friends. Uh, please stay tuned for ways that we can continue to help our neighbors. Take Thank care.